the structure of command at the start of the war in the RHQ and at the squadron levels. Before moving forward, it is important to look at the importance of Chump. The village Chump, the strategic town of Aknur, and the road leading to Jammu in the south. In the north is the high Kalidhar range of hills, and in the south is the perennial unfordable river Chenab, both formidable obstacles. To Pakistan, the importance of this area lay in the fact that capture of Aknur and the bridge over the river cuts off the communication with Rajori and other towns in the north as also the other military formations located there. To the south was the axis for advance toward Jammu. For India, the critical Pakistani communication road and rail links of GT Road is just 35 kilometers from the international border and Marala Headworks that controls the waters of the river Chadab was just 10 kilometers away. The broad deployment of 10 Infantry Division was 10 Infantry Division and the second line of defense at Troti Donchak, 28 Infantry Brigade, 191 Infantry Brigade, 52 Infantry Brigade, the concentration area of 72 Armored Regiment and 68 Infantry Brigade. The deployment of 191 Infantry Brigade on the night of 3rd December 1971 at the commencement of hostilities was deployment of screens, Headquarter 191 Infantry Brigade at Chamb, 5 Sikh at Gura Fagla, 5 Assam at Gogi Barsala, 4-1 GR at Janda Manavar and 10 Garwar rifles at Raipur and Dhar crossings. 9 horse less 2 squadrons in area Chapriyal. Alpha squadron less 3 troops at Chak Pandit with a troop each in the battalion locations. C squadron in the area of Nadala and Tlev. Within 30 hours, 3rd December, attack imminent, Commandant ordered 72 Armoured Regiment to move to its forward assembly area at Bhagwanchak adjoining Palawala. The regiment remained in Palawala throughout the war. Pakistan's plan for offensive against India in the Chump sector. HR 2100 hours India time, 3rd December 1971. Park 66 Infantry Brigade and 111 Infantry Brigades to secure a lodgement across the ceasefire line. 66 Infantry Brigade north of Koel, opposite 56 area. 111 Infantry Brigade opposite Gogi Barsala in the south. 11 Cav group to then break out and advance towards Mandiala crossing on Axis Deva Mandiala and secure the home bank of Manavatavi at Mandiala crossing before last light 
4 December 1971. 111 Infantry Brigade to conduct offensive probe towards Chak Pandit and Cham to draw out the reserves of 191 Infantry Brigade and capture Cham by last light 5 December 1971. 20 Infantry Brigade in the south to hold ground and make attack demonstrations in the area Burijal, Manavar and Nadala enclave. 4 AK Brigade to establish a bridgehead and capture Kachriyal Ridge and Mandala Bridge. Further operations towards Aknur depending on the situation. Sixty six Infantry Brigade was able to secure a three thousand yard lodgement. Eleven cavalry broke out at first night. One 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 Infantry Brigade failed to make any hit. In the south, all the attacks failed. Immediately after the attack by Park on 3 December night, the GOC 10 Infantry Division immediately released 9 horse to 191 Infantry Brigade. 9 horse less 2 squadrons were located at Chump. 9 horse Alpha Squadron with troops at point 303 Barsala and Janda. 9 horse Bravo Squadron less 2 troops in area Chakpandit with troops at Burajal and Manava. 9 horse Charlie Squadron east of Tavi in area Khor. 72 armored regiment moved forward to its forward assembly area with the RHQ located at Palamala, Alpha Squadron at Palatan, Brav Squadron to Chapayal and Charlie Squadron at Kalit. Night 4th 5th December, Bravo Squadron 72 Armored Regiment ordered to cross over to the west of Manavatavi and placed under command 191 Infantry Brigade. Seven Kumau and C Squadron 72 Armored Regiment were ordered to counterattack Mandiala North. C Squadron commenced the move towards Mandiala Crossing. Seven Kumau got delayed due to non-availability of troop carrying vehicles and 7 Kamau RNO group got caught in shelling where the CO and some officers and javans were seriously injured. The attack could thus not go through. The GOC now directed C squadron and 7 Kamau to take up positions on the east bank of the river. By first light, 5th December 1971, Bravo Squadron was deployed with one troop under Emi Man in Goda Heights with a company 5 Sikh, four troop under Nair Brisaldar Umed Singh in the area of Fagla near Point 303 in company 5 Sikh, two troop under 2nd Lieutenant DK Sood to cover gaps south of Chak Pandit between Janda and Manavar, three troop under Lieutenant Gautam Chopra to cover gap between Janda and Burijal in 41 GR area, squadron headquarters at Chak Pandit and the regimental headquarters continued at Palamwala with A and C squadron at Palatan and C squadron en route to Mandiala. Meanwhile, 4 AK Brigade reached Mandiala crossing and was preparing to attack across Manavatavi. The crossing incidentally was defended only by a company, nine para-commandos in an infantry role. Seven Kumau 
was still consolidating due to the shelling in which its R&O groups, including the commanding officer, had been injured. The attack was to be launched at 0300 hours on 5th December 1971. CO of Park 6 AK Battalion, however, lost his way and failed to join the unit to lead it to the FUP. Neither the 4 AK Brigade Commander nor CO Park 13 AK were aware of this. Northern Company lost its direction on crossing the river and veered northwards and ran into 216 medium regiment gun areas deployed in Chapriyan. There was a lot of hand to hand fighting with these medium gunners who fought valiantly. The depth batteries of 216 medium and 39 medium regiment engaged the enemy by direct shooting causing very heavy casualties. The retreating Southern Company of 13 AK Battalion managed to capture the eastern bank of the Mandiala Bridge. Charlie Squadron along with 7th Kamau, who had by then stabilized, counterattacked from the east and restored the situation, causing very heavy enemy casualties. Number 1 troop under Captain M. E. Mann effectively engaged enemy armour going to and coming back from Mandiala crossing and destroyed 5 tanks and 4 RCLs. Two of his tanks were hit, the gun of one being damaged and one catching fire which was later extinguished. These tanks were then pulled back. Number 4 troop B squadron Fagla 5 December. The enemy attacked area of Fagla with armor and infantry. Number 4 Troop Bravo Squadron was led by Nayab Saldar Umid Singh. It destroyed three enemy tanks and two RCLs and successfully repulsed the attack. One of the troops tank caught fire due to a hit which was later recovered. One tank got damaged by medium artillery fire and the third tank's main gun was damaged. Such was the ferocity of the engagement 
that all four tanks of the troop were hit and Nabri Saldar himself was injured and evacuated. It now had only one tank which was hit but had been recovered. Due to the northern thrust being blocked by C Squadron 72 Armored Regiment and 7 Kumau, Park 23 Infantry Division now decided to focus on the southern thrust. 111 Infantry Brigade and 2 Armored Brigade were employed on the thrust line south of Moel, Gogi Barsala, Chak Pandit on to Manavartavi towards Chamb, Dhar and Raipur crossings. The enemy maintained pressure by attacking Guda, Fagla and Point 303. Gogi Barsala came under heavy attack from infantry and armor but was repulsed by No. 3 to Browse Cotton and companies of 5 Assam and 5 Sikh. SDM Fateh Singh was wounded and last Davadar Mahavir Singh assumed command. By first light 6 December, Alpha Squadron crossed over and was deployed half squadron under Major Kalan with number 3 troop under Nayab Rusaldar Karamchand and 4 troop under Rusaldar Mohanlal in area of Fagla, point 303. Second half squadron under Squadron 2 IC Captain Aluwalia with number 1 troop led by Colonel Bali and number 2 troop led by Nairabh Saldar Sukhdev in area Janda Burejal. Six December 1971, 2nd Lieutenant D.K. Sooth, using his anti-aircraft machine gun of the tank, shot down a Pakistani F-86 Sabre jet which was seen crashing down. Seventeen thirty hours, 6 December 1971, location Chapriyal. Due to intense enemy shelling, the regiment lost two of its finest officers, Major Amarjit Singh and Captain Emil Safaya, who were overseeing the deployment of the squadron at the time. Considering the importance and dominance of Gura, Brigade decided to counterattack with Delta Company 58 GR and half squadron armor under 2IC Alpha Squadron with numbers 1 and 2 troops Alpha Squadron from area Janda Burijal in the south. The counterattack was ordered at 1430 hours to be launched at 1800 hours. The attack was launched at 18.10 hours. Enemy was still reorganizing. Two enemy tanks and two RCLs were destroyed with heavy infantry casualties. Gura was thus captured by 19.30 hours. With half squadron Alpha going to Gura, Park 111 Infantry Brigade with support from 28 Cav relaunched attacks on Gogi Basala and succeeded in the capture of these localities from 5 Assam. 
Enemy armor found the dummy minefield gap between Janda and Burijal and exploited this with speed. 20 infantry brigade with a squadron of 26 cav managed to overcome the defenses of 41 GR at Manavar and came up to Malke camp which was not held. Commando 191 Infantry Brigade informed the GOC 10 Infantry Division that 5 Assam and 41 GR battalion defended areas had been overrun and withdrawn east of Panavatavi. The GOC 10 Div therefore ordered the withdrawal of the entire brigade east of Panavatavi by 2130 hours on 6 December 1971. 9 December General Iftikhar Khan Janjua, the GOC 23 Div, who led the Div with so much aggression, died in a helicopter crash. He was replaced by Brigadier Kamal Matiduddin, who decided to continue with General Janjua's plan for offensive. 10 December 1971, the battle for Dhar and Raipur crossings. 111 Infantry Brigade launched a two battalion up attack roughly along the Dhar and Raipur crossings and Park armor was expected to break out towards Palamala through this bridgehead. By 0300 hours, the enemy had captured 9 Jaw and 10 Garwal forward defended localities. Zero six hundred hours, quick counterattack by three four GR, which was under command nine Jat. The counterattack halted by the enemy, however, disrupted and delayed the induction of additional enemy infantry and armor. Simultaneously, the enemy attacked Dhar and Raipur crossings. Both these positions fell to the enemy. Alpha Company. 3-4 GR and 3 Troop Alpha Squadron 72 Armored Regiment counterattacked Rapo Crossing. Tanks of the Park inducted armor and the Indian tanks both got bogged down. Our troops now created a perimeter to prevent further expansion of the bridgehead and break out by the enemy. By now, the enemy had expanded the bridgehead measuring 4,000 meters wide and 1,000 meters deep. The enemy armor was now poised to break out with the limited armor that had been inducted towards Paravala. and number two troop then got into a counter penetration role. This force of Central Armored Regiment and the infantry prevented further expansion of the bridgehead and subsequently became the fire base for the counterattack force. The GOC 15 Corps specially flew down into the DIV sector and personally saw the operations from the DIV operations room. He concurred with the GOC 10 Division's decision to launch counterattacks at Dhar and Raipur crossings. The situation in late afternoon, 10 December, was that the enemy had created a bridgehead 4,000 meters wide, 1,000 meters deep, and some enemy tanks had been inducted, waiting to break out. Two troops of Alpha Squadron, one troop under Lieutenant Bali, and two troops under Nayab Sardar Sukhdev Singh were in a counter-penetration role, later to become the fire base. A decision was taken to launch a counter-attack under Major M.S. Petrel. It was to consist of a troop of Bravo Squadron under Risaldar Ajit Singh, number four troop Alpha Squadron under Risaldar Monlal, 
थ्री टूप्स एक्स आर्मर डिलीवरी रेजिमेंट अंडर सेकेंड लेफ्टिनेंट डीके सूद एंड टू टैंक्स ऑफ नाइन हॉर्स अ टोटल ऑफ ट्वेल्व टैंक्स एच आर वॉज सेवनटीन थर्टी आवर्स A textbook counterattack with accurate fire support from the fire base, an assault by the armor in difficult terrain, and the assault by 5.8 GR. Simultaneously, Rapu Crossing was successfully attacked by a company of ten Garhwal and a company of three four GR, supported by armor from C Squadron Nine Horse, with three Troop Alpha Squadron Seventy Two Armored Regiment continuing in fire support. I assure you the country is in safe hands.